Hi, and welcome to Brems to Puzzles, a channel where I try and showcase the fun that could be had in the world of variant Sudoku. And welcome to a bonus sudoku tude video. Now, the reason this is being released as a bonus rather than part of as a pack is because I've kind of already constructed um, the first four packs and already recorded the first four packs of sudoku tudes. But I've been playing around with this constraint and my testers said I should actually release this puzzle. And it was created as a Sudoku Tude, so I'm going to release it as a Sudoku Tude, but I'm actually going to release it um, as a normal video and then link it to the Sudoku Tude set and release this as a bonus in set two. So when the pack comes out for set two, this will be a, listed as a bonus video. And when the lists come out and everything, this will be a bonus video. So I have been releasing PDFs of Sudoku Tudes. Um, the PDF of Sudoku Tude set one has been released, and that's available in the collections page. Um, and I'm releasing them as PDFs, even though they've been released as videos, and I'm also releasing links to where they can be found um, because I want people who want to potentially record videos or anything to be able to, or just it to be easier to find the puzzles rather than have to search them. Of course, there's the playlist that contains all of the puzzles, but this is the end mates, or the puzzle is called end mates because I've been crawling the constraint inmates because um, of the way it works. So, of course, there'll be a link below to where you can try this, but I just want to go over the constraint that I've been playing with. So I'll go through the rules, and then I'll talk about the constraint a little bit. So the rules are normal Sudoku rules apply. Um, so in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits 1 to 9 must be placed without repetition. And this is using the 10 mates constraint, which is a digit n in a cell with an arrow, when added to the digit n cells away in the direction of the arrow sums to 10. So for example, if this was a three, then one, two, three cells away, those two digits would need to sum to 10, and that would need to be a seven. If this was a four, then one, two, three, four cells away, um, sorry, if this was a four, no, jumping the gun a bit there, if this was a four, then the digit four cells away would need to sum to 10, and that would need to be a six. And that's the way the constraint works. But the reason I'm calling it N mates is because in um, with these... Um, uh, with these arrows, I've been playing with different values, including potentially having different values within the same grid. Um, I'm actually working on a puzzle where arrows will sum to different digits, and I've actually got a digit next to the arrow indicating what that end mate value is, So, um, and other ways of doing it as well. So I'm, I'm working on a puzzle where the end mate value is 11. I'm working on a puzzle where the end mate value is 9, and I've set some smaller grids where the end mate value is lower again. I have found the most, the prettiest one is where the end mate value is the size of the grid. This is a nine by nine plus one, hence this being a 10 mate, um, a 10 mate puzzle. Um, but I did want to just get this out there and, you know, I, I've got a channel to do it on. So this is end mates by Bremster. Hi. Um, and yeah, they're the rules. I'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer. Let's give this a shot. Now, I have looked at this one a bit recently, so I kind of know where to look. But this isn't designed to be a particularly hard puzzle. It's designed to be an introduction to the constraint. So let's go through um, what is here. So we can kind of start by looking at any cell and thinking what are the possible digits that you can put into a cell with an arrow, because it has to point to a cell further away. So this digit has to point to one of these cells. So it can't be higher than six, because there is no cell higher than six away. So it has to be from one, two, three, four, five, six. But we can immediately eliminate one and two from being in the box. And we can immediately say in a 10 mate puzzle, that you can never put five on an arrow that is pointing horizontally. Hint there, there are some puzzles with end mates coming where the arrows are diagonal. But you can never put five on a horizontal end mate puzzle because one, two, three, four, five, those two cells would need to both be fives and that doesn't work. So this can't be a five. Now, this is doing some whittling, but we can limit, potentially eliminate some more stuff. If this was a three, one, two, three, that would have to be a seven. That's fine. If this was a six, one, two, three, four, five, six, this would need to be a four, and it can't be. So this can't be a, a six. What if this was a four? Well, if this was a four, one, two, three, four, this would need to be a six, 
Well, that looks okay, but then this would be saying that six away, one, two, three, four, five, six, those two cells would need to sum to 10. So we would be saying that those two cells need to sum to 10, those two cells need to sum to 10. If that was a six, both of those would need to be a four. That can't be a four, that becomes a three. One, two, three cells away becomes a seven. And this is the sort of concept I'm playing with. And I know I recently picked on puzzles with a lot of whittling. This has a little bit. I don't think it's got as much, but I, I was grumpy that day and I apologize. So anyway, so let's look at what this could be. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm putting all of the options in, but we immediately know they're not three, four, and we know they're not five. This can't be a one because this would need to be a nine. So it can't be. So it's either two or six. Two would make this eight. Six would make that four. Both of those seem possible. We're kind of done there. This arrow, what can we do with this one? Well, again, we've only got six cells we're pointing at. It can't be one, two, three. So this is four, five, or six. It's not five because you can never put five on an arrow in this puzzle. So four, one, two, three, four would make that a six and it can't be. So this is a six. So we know that six cells away is a four and we're starting to put digits in. So that kind of works. Now, I kind of made it that you should be able to pick almost any arrow, but I am i don't remember the exact flow, but let's look what we've got here, because this is very restricted, because there's only six possible digits that, could, um, that it can point to. So this has to be from one to six, but it can't be two, three, four, five, or six. So that has to be a one, and one digit away has to be the other half of the 10 sum. That becomes a nine. This is putting more restrictions here. Is it putting enough? I don't remember, let's have a look. Because this is pointing at six digits. Well, it can't be one. It can't be two because two would make point to here and these would only sum to seven. It can't be three. It can't be four, one, two, three, four. Those would sum to, um, would sum to six, not 10. It can't be five for multiple reasons. This must be a six and six cells away must be a four. The six is now looking up, making that the two. So two cells away must be an eight. And we're filling out the grid slowly and slowly. Remember, this was designed to be an introductory puzzle to the constraint. Now, can I do anything by Sudoku now? One, two, three, four, five, seven, and nine. I can remove nine from there. So I know nine is in one of those two. Hmm. Okay, not as much as I thought. This one is only pointing at five cells, one, two, three, four, five. Now it can't be one or five or four. So this is only a two or a three. It can't be a three because a three would point at that cell and the sum would be four. So this is two making that eight. Okay, now all of these other ones are pointing at, except for this one, are pointing at larger numbers of digits. So let's jump to this one. So this is only pointing at six digits. It could be a one, it can't be two, three, it could be four, it can't be five or six. And four doesn't work because four, one, two, three, four would point to there, that would need to be six and it can't be for multiple reasons. So this is a one, making this a nine, which takes nine out of there, making that nine. Okay, I'm tempted to look at this now because the maximum this could be is seven. It could be one, it can't be two, it could be three, it can't be four, it can't be five, it can't be six, it could be seven. So this is one, three, or seven. Okay. Am I wanting to look at Sudoku? Possibly. Four can't be in any of those, so four is in one of those two. There is Sudoku to do in this puzzle. Three is in one of those two. Two and three are both down here. Um, there is Sudoku to do in this puzzle. I just don't remember where. Three is in one of those two. This is a triple. One, two, three, four, five, and eight. There's no four there. There's no eight there. There's no four there. So that makes a five, eight pair, making that a four. Okay, what can this be? Okay, 
this could be anything from one to eight by arrow logic, except it is a bit, um, there's some things that can't be. It can't be a one, that would need to be a nine and it can't be. It can't be a two, that would need to be an eight and it can't be. I think it can be a three, making that a seven. It can't be four, it can't be five. Six would make one, two, three, four, five, that a four and it can't be, it can't be six. So it's only three or seven, which means there's a three, seven pair either here and here or here and here with a 7, 3, or a 3, 7. So the 3, 7 pair in this bottom row is now kind of filled, but we don't know which of those cells it's in. That's one of them and one of those two. So maybe we look here now, because it can't be 1, it could be 2, it can't be 3 because we know the 3, 7 is in here. It can't be 4, it can't be 5, it can't be 6, 7, and so 2 or 8. But if this is 8, that would need to be 2, and it can't be. So this is 2, making that 8, looking up, making that 5. Okay, so what's this? The only arrow we haven't looked at. It could be 1, it can't be 2, it can't be 3, because we know the 3, 7 is in those cells. Oh, also, there's a 3 looking down. Can't be 4. Can't be five, because you can't put five on an arrow. If it was six, could be six, it could be seven maybe. It can't be eight, and you can never put nine on an arrow. There's no cell nine away. A one would make that a nine. A six would mean one, two, three, four, five, six. That would need to be four, and it can't be. That's not six. Seven would mean one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would need to be three, and it can't be. That's a one, making that a nine. We've now got nines looking down, making that a nine. These are three, four, and five, and there's no four there. Four is in one of those two. Seven, that being a nine, means that can't be the seven, because seven and nine sums to 16, not 10. So that's the three, and that's the seven. And I think we're now done with the arrow. Ah, oh, no, this one still isn't done. But we now this have this down to a pair. These are five and six. <laughs> How stuck am I going to get? Yeah, place your bets. This is five, six, or seven. Two is still down here. One, ah, one in this box is here because of the four ones looking into the box. Six is not in any of those. So six is in one of those two, which puts six in one of those two. Nine is in one of those two by Sudoku. Nine is up here. I've already got four down there. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that could be. Oh, no, that can't be a three anymore. That's not the three. That's the three, which means this can't be the seven. So either that's a nine, which it is, or that's a seven, which I think it still can be. This is five, six, or seven. What's this triple? Two, seven, and eight. There's no seven there. Seven is in one of those two. There's no two there. Two in this box. Yeah, two in this box is right there. So this is five, six, seven, and it's not seven. That's a five, six pair. That's a seven. That's a five. Taking five out of both of those, that's a six, seven. So these are triples. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, eight, and nine go in. There's no five at the bottom or eight at the top. So these are four and seven, which is resolved. That's the four. That's the seven. So this is, oh, it's not quite a triple at the top row. What am I missing in column five? Two, four, six, seven. Well, this can't be two or six or seven. That's a four. That's a naked single. So these are two, six, and seven. 
There's no six there. There's no two or seven there. That's the six. This is a two or a seven, meaning that's the seven and that's the two. And this one or three could go either way. However, that clue was still important for reducing the possibilities in here for doing Sudoku. The seven turns around making that the six and that the seven. Put six in one of those two by Sudoku. At least I think without this arrow, this puzzle was not unique yet. Four looks across saying, that's not the four, that's the four. In this row, I need to put an eight in one of those two. These are three, five, and eight. I need to put a two in one of those two. Is it this row? One, three, four, and eight. So four is in one of those two. Four is in one of those two. Six is in the corner because of the four sixes looking into box three. Need to put a one in one of those. And the others are seven, eight, nine. Well, that's a seven by Sudoku because of the sevens looking across, which means that's the eight, which means that's the two, that's the seven. The two looks down saying that's not the two, that's the two. These are 1, 8, and 9. There's no 8 there. There's no 8 there. That's the 8. This is a 1, 9. And the 9 is looking up, making that the 1 and that the 9. The 9 is looking across saying that's not the 9, but the 1 is looking down, making that the 3, which does work. But that makes that the 5 and that the 3. This column is missing its 2, and this box is missing 1 and 5. And the 5 is looking across, making that the 1 and that the 5. Okay. This 5 is looking across, making that the 6 and that the 5, which makes that the 6. Looking up saying that's not the 6, that's the 6. This row is missing its three, and these are five and eight. So what's this box missing? One, four, eight, and there's a four and an eight here already. That's the one. These are a four, eight. This is a five or a nine, and the nine is looking up, making that the five, which makes that the nine, that the eight, that the five. The 5 is looking down, making that the 8, that the 5. The 8 makes that the 4 and that the 8. And now I've just got a single box to resolve. No 1 in any of those. That's the 1 by pencil mark, making that the 4. By pencil mark, making that the 9. By pencil mark, making that the 3. And that is how you solve N mates by Bremster. Now, this has had a, a few tests on it, as you can see. Um, but I did want to get this puzzle out because... I, I just wanted to get people's opinions of the constraint. Now, as I said, this is a 10 mates puzzle, so I'm only playing with the concept of the arrow summing to 10. Now, I also want to be clear here. I'm playing with this and I haven't seen this constraint before, but it is very, very likely that other people have done this before me because I haven't seen every puzzle that's ever been published and there's no such thing as an original idea. So there may have been dozens of puzzles that have done exactly this thing before. I don't know. My testers hadn't seen one, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been done. So if you want to turn around in the comments and say, well, Bremster stole this idea from blah. No, I hadn't seen it before and I've been playing with it. But that doesn't mean I think it's 100% original. It's heavily based on other um, constraints that are out there. It's probably not original because we've done a lot of stuff in grids, but I've been enjoying playing with it and I wanted to get my intro puzzle out there. That's all. That's it. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoy the puzzle. I really do hope you're enjoying the Sudoku Tude set because I'm really happy with how those puzzles have been going and the feedback from them. Thank you everyone. And as always, good luck with your solving.